MWC Barcelona 2023 wraps up its second day. Ibrahim Sani and Hilal Azmi reports on location. All right, thanks to my colleagues in the studio in Bukit Jalil. Uh, day two of the MWC Barcelona has been concluded and it has been a power-packed day. Uh, we'll start off with some news when it comes to the Exiata Group uh, because we all know that while Exiata Group is a Malaysian conglomerate, it has uh, its uh, businesses footprints all around the globe. We start off with the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding that has been signed between Exiata Group with one of the biggest telcos in Southeast Asia, pardon me, in Asia actually, which is SK Telecom. SK Telecom is part of the SK Group, the second largest conglomerate or chaebol in South Korea after uh, Samsung. Uh, the memorandum of understanding that was signed between Exiata Group with SK Telecom involves the rollout of Metaverse solutions in 11 Southeast Asian countries as well as in South Asia. As we all know, Exiata has presence in South Asia through Dialog and many other conglomerates and partnerships that they have stuck both in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and India. So the rollout of the SK Telecom solutioning of Metaverse with Exiata's presence will herald in a new uh, entry of uh, bringing about solutions of Metaverse through their global footprint. And of course, Exiata and SK Telecom will continue on to deepen this business relationship between these two entities. On top of that, uh, uh, in, con in conjunction with the rollout of Metaverse, um, another uh, Exiata uh, subsidiary company called Exiata Digital Labs have signed uh, uh, another MOU uh, with a pan-African uh, uh, manufacturer or telco. Um, and in this sense, it is a tripartite agreement. Uh, this is following Exiata Digital Labs uh, offering a partnership with uh, Dialog Exiata as well as Chenosis Partnership uh, to develop and roll out some products uh, and launching the Pan-African Developer Platform with uh, the uh, MPN uh, subsidiary company there. One thing that we need to look at is that this is a strategic partnership that looks to launch the Chinosis Developer Accelerator Platform across Africa by collaborating with uh, Exiata Digital Labs' uh, Exonec Enterprise Product Suite and Dialog Exiata's IdeaMart Platform. Uh, and of course, the goal of this uh, relationship is to build the uh, developer platform or accelerator platform uh, to offer developers in Pan-Africa businesses and access to a range of APIs and digital services that will help innovation there. Following this, GSMA's Open Gateway, also a global initiative to seamlessly expose mobile operators' uh, network capacities uh, with a federated or consistent federated and commercial framework is going to be introduced there as well. So. Uh, today, two big news coming in from Exiata. One is the MOU with SK Telecom. Another is a tripartite uh, agreement between Exiata Digital Labs with Dialog Exiata and Genosis to roll out solutioning in Africa. Now, the news about M M uh, MWC is not just about Exiata. Uh, we've seen how uh, the uh, development of a global uh, network, including that of Huawei, for instance. Uh, Huawei continues to dominate uh, the MWC uh, mobile tech fair. This is despite U.S. sanctions because a contingent of Chinese companies led by the giant uh, Huawei is turning the world's biggest wireless trade fair uh, into an opportunity to showcase their muscle, not just into the networking and mobile network, but of course the policy of it and driving the conversation moving forward. Now we've known that over the U.S., uh, TikTok, spy balloons, computer chips has always been the issue there. And Huawei has always been at the brunt of these kind of uh, arguments when it comes to U.S. sanctions against not just uh, Huawei per se, but Chinese companies in general. But Huawei continues to develop the conversations in MWC, at least the ones that I am witnessing as well. Now, this is despite the whole chip war or pseudo chip war uh, between uh, U.S. and China. So the conversation of who holds the center ground when it comes to mobile network technology is it the US? Is it China? Well, that's happening here at MWC. Now, on top of all this, other simple, I guess, uh, more fun news, uh, so to speak, includes some of the product rollout uh, of all phones, mobile gadgets, and announcements. Uh, so we've seen how uh, the uh, announcement 
of Realme's uh, 20, 240 watt fast charging phone is getting an international release. Uh, this is following the GT Neo 5 and Realme GT3. It will soon be available around the world and in selected markets. Uh, and this 240 watt fast charging phone is getting that whole traction there. On top of that, Redmi's latest 300 watt charging feed powers the phone under five minutes. That was the key highlight that we can bring about there. On top of that, OnePlus is launching a foldable phone later this year. We've seen how OnePlus has been introducing some very revolutionary uh, solutions out there. But one thing remains, can OnePlus get uh, the uh, market share that they dream of, the way, say, for instance, Apple is getting around the globe? Finally, the Xiaomi 13 Pro, 13 Pro is go going global as well. Uh, and that Xiaomi 13 Pro uh, is one of the, has one of the best uh, cameras uh, on a mobile device. Uh, but yet again, the market share is also questionable considering the hegemony that is held between Samsung for the Android devices and, of course, uh, the iPhone for the iOS devices. Between those two, uh, we've seen how they hold about 80% of the market share. Can Xiaomi 13 Pro get some of that slice of that pie? Finally, uh, outside of the world of mobile phones, uh, Lenovo, for instance, they have introduced the latest laptop and mobile concepts at MWC 2013. Uh, we've seen how some of the Lenovo concept designs with rollable screens are very near in the future. Perhaps some of them are going to be introduced later towards this year or early next year. And some of the conversations can be seen in terms of Lenovo's rollable screen laptop uh, with its Motorola branded rollable phone that's also being introduced there. Now, Nokia is revealing a new logo to remind all of us that Nokia is still relevant. The new logo is pretty snazzy, uh, but I don't know whether it can be coupled with a whole host of products that is uh, demanded by the market or can the market accept it. Those are the items when it comes to some of the mobile devices. Finally, we move towards policy. Now, one thing that is, has been always been the concern of uh, network operators and telco operators is that the development and the rollout of network technology has always been borne, the cost of it, by the telco companies and the network companies. The, the ministerial meetings, at least some of the ones that I have personally witnessed at MWC 2023, is all about sharing the cost of network development. Now, I'm not just talking about 5G, because in Africa, for instance, 4G is still wanted. There's still a lot of room to go there as well. But globally, 5G, of course, holds the center ground in terms of the conversation moving forward. Even in Malaysia, for instance, the single wholesale network rollout has always been the debate in lo the locally in Malaysia, but globally, who bears the cost for the development of network? Amongst the telco operators, the argument is that the development of the, uh, network uh, cost has to be borne by all the content manufacturers and content providers as well. Think Meta, think Google. We all use these kind of solutions from them, but we are using it on behalf of the network platform that has been built and cost being borne by the network operators. Can they still foot the bill when it comes to rollout developers? That policy conversation has not ended yet. It started yesterday at day one MWC. It continues to be uh, debated uh, in day two MWC, and it will continue to be debated tomorrow as well on day three. That, in fact, will be the central focus of what I would be looking at at MWC this time around. Who bears the cost for network developer? Those are the kind of developments that I can bring to you for MWC 2023 for day two. As you can see, a lot has been brought to you for this particular day, just day one, uh, day two, by the way. So as uh, more is going to be developed for day three as well. This is me reporting together with Hilal Azmi, uh, the uh, editor of uh, social media for Esrawadi, and myself uh, reporting to you from uh, Fran, Barcelona uh, in Spain. But of course, I'm not particularly at uh, Fira Barcelona. I am in the uh, center court of uh, downtown uh, the Br Barcelona itself. It's been a great environment here. A lot of people here. And of course, that whole realization that 100,000 people are attending this event is true and well. So MWC 2023 is returning back to its pre-pandemic levels. A lot will be brought to you in the days to come. But for now, on behalf of Vila Hazmi and myself, Ibrahim Sani, we're reporting from Barcelona in Spain. Back to you in the studio.